Hey, Coach. Uh, Gunnar Halter was regarded by scouts for his, for his arm, but he really wanted to play a position and hit. How has he adjusted to going there full time? And, and you mentioned him competing for second base. Um, I guess from, from the time he got here to now, how far has he come? He's come a lot. I mean, he's had to – all fall he played short. So it was him and Westy out there at shortstop. And then as we got to the end of the fall, we said, all right, now we need to probably make us because he hasn't played as much short as uh, second base. So he's kind of all the angles, all the things so that you have to, a second baseman has to do. Great first step getting to first. You just got a lot of responsibility as a second baseman. So he's – that's been his biggest growth. I mean, and just working on him offensively. He's got a chance. He's got a really high side. I mean, you don't see many – I mean, he's probably 6'3". I mean, big athletic infielders that um, – and he moves around. He's 95 mile an hour off the mound if he wanted to be. So – he can he can do a lot of special things. Coach, not a lot of uh, college ballparks have luxury condominiums in left field. I, I knew you knew what the dude was going to look like when you when you took the job, but now that you've actually been able to practice on it, see it, see it come to fruition, what what is that like as a coach? Um, it's great. It has been a uh, it's amazing. Some days you walk out there and you're just like, if you're having a bad day, you walk out there and you say, man, I'm one of the lucky ones, you know. Because it is, uh, it's unbelievable. And once we are able to get inside, it is be as beautiful inside as it is out. But it gives us, you know, the best part about here to me is, and um, the ability to practice, the ability to work. And we have the field, we have the Palmero, we have the stuff underneath. I mean, just to be able to get our guys their work is, you know, a coach. A lot of that goes away. You don't notice the condos after. Now I'll probably notice them day one when we're out there playing. But you just have that ability to, to be able to work has been the best part. And it's beautiful. Coach, Cole, Cole Gordon has swung the bat since uh, 2017. Talked to him today, said he's looking forward to that. Had talked to you about being in that uh, DH pinch hitter role as well. How does that square with uh, the use of him also in the relief role pitching? Is that Cole Gordon? Yes. Yeah, we've kind of, <laughs> I don't know if he told you, we've kind of taken him out of that for now. He's just pitching at this point. Mm -hmm. So he did it in the fall just to see where he's at, but right now he's kind of, we're working him there. We could use him later in the year if we needed him to, but I, I wanted him to focus more on the pitching as we get into the start of the season. Coming in as, as a first-year coach, how do you manage the expectations that carry over from, from last year's club? You know, we, we've talked about things. I mean, we've kind of put last year to bed in some ways. I mean, the kids will always have that memory, always have that experience. Um, but it's a new group. And uh, hopefully we pull from those experiences and that tough times they went through. Um, but it's been about coaching this year's team. I mean, believe it or not, when I took over at Indiana, I took over a team. But most of those kids have been to Omaha, too and the best time during that program's history. And uh, our goal in our talk is about continuing and adding to the legacy. And um, you know, one of the biggest things with us is maybe being a little bit more consistent. Um, I am, I'm excited about how we start our season and I wanna be good start to finish. And, and that's a big piece of building this program. You talked about uh, how freshmen last year, they started off slow and then they got better at the end of the season. One of the freshmen who started out fast last year was Josh Hatcher. And then towards the end of the season, he was struggling a little bit. What's his role going to be on this team this year? Man, he is our uh, – he's had a good spring training to this point. He's swinging it well. He's very talented. Could play some first. Could play some outfield. Could DH. Just do a lot of different things. He's pretty versatile. So we kind of got him bouncing around. And he – I don't know if it's just this time of year he likes to play, but he's been really good since we've been back. So I'm hoping we continue that on. And he learned a little bit from last year, I think. Coach, a lot of talk about the left field loss. What, what does that do to the ballpark and how it plays? What does that do as far as your power numbers? You know, I wasn't here last year, so I didn't know what it looked like without it. But the guys in the fall felt like the ball was carrying better. But now we're back in the spring. It's kind of a different wind. So we've had, I mean, and the weather's been a little crazy. So we've had it gushing out the right, gushing out the left. Some days it looks like it's going to right and it's swirling. So we're still in the process of figuring that out. But in the fall, we felt like the ball carried a little better. The kids did, at least. Coach, you were here listening to Jake's press conference as well. Having a guy like that who's been here for now his senior year, is it almost as a first-year head coach, having a guy like that almost give you a little bit of sense of ease? And what has Jake done for your transition? You know, he's been great. I lean on Jake a lot. And I lean on Jake a lot. And, and you see it up here. He gives me goosebumps when he talks, when he talks about the M over S. That's the thing I get from the players more than anything is how much it means to be a part of this program. And you see that from Jake, and um, he has had an experience here. It's been a lot, and um, but man, I, there's nobody else that loves this program more than that kid. But it goes for all our kids, and 
So I lean on him, I talk to him, we kind of go back and forth. It could be as simple as, hey, tell me about the shades this morning. We were talking about the sun and how the sun set because he played so many games here. And, um, you know, being a mentor to our young kids, man, what, how lucky we are to have him in the lineup, but also for all the young kids in our program to see how he goes about his business. I've coached a lot of great kids and a lot of great workers, but in between those two lines, it's as hard nosed as you'll ever see. And that is in practice. I mean, he goes, he dives 10 times a practice in BP. And he just, he doesn't know how to play at half speed or 75%. He is 100% every day he goes out there. And for a coach, when you're all American, has that attitude, it's, it's a blessing. So just a follow up on, on Halker. Do you have any anticipation of putting him on the mound, letting him pitch some, or is he? Is he no, he's just there? a position player for us. Okay. And uh, a question about JT Pien. I mean, uh, similar to Jake, he, you know, Jake had the opportunity to go pro, and he had you know a couple of years to do that. JT decided to turn down first round money. Um, the, how have you seen him embrace being a, a college player and experiencing college uh, over going pro at, at his age? Yeah, you know, JT's situation is obviously unique. Um, very similar to like Jake, man, JT wanted to be at Mississippi State. He made a conscious decision, turned down some money, um, but is con so confident in his ability to be able to come in here, produce, and then, you know, hopefully make it better and move into pro ball and be ready. Um, the maturity level for JT has been like any other freshman. There's, you know, hey, I got to get up on my own and go to class and take care of myself and go through the, the rigor of a, you know, the rigor of a college student athlete is not easy. So. It's been a good experience for him. He had a great fall. Uh, he's a tremendous kid, a great teammate. And really, he stays away from the limelight a little bit. He just wants to be one of the boys, which I, I love seeing. So it's been fun watching JT, and it'll be a lot of fun watching him out there on you know, on the weekends. You mentioned Coach Cheese earlier. Where, where have you seen the immediate returns on such specialized training with, with catchers? Just, I, I think, receiving day in and day out. Things that we don't see, just as actual, you know, getting a pitch here, getting a pitch there. Um, talking to our catchers in the middle of the scrimmage, seeing small things, the details of catching, the signals and communicating with, you know, there's such a communication between your pitching coach, your catching coach, and the catcher and the pitcher during the game, and how they communicate and how we're setting up and different things that way. Just very small things that probably day in and day out, they, things that I don't see. I'm in the dugout, I'm watching the game, and he's sitting there throwing his hat on the ground, like, what happened? And like, and he's just, you know, we just missed the pitch. We just, you know, he sees it. Um, probably a little bit better than most of us because he sees it through the catcher's eyes. That's why catchers, catchers make great coaches because they, they see all – you look in the big leagues, a lot of those guys are, are former catchers because they, they have a different perspective on the game, and he's done a great job with them. You talked a little bit about Spencer earlier, but having a guy like Riley Self who's also had experience closing out games, just how do you plan on using those two? And do you think you know, having Riley is going to help Spencer kind of keep his arm fresh, a little bit more fresh? You know, those are the pieces I, I'd really like to have some – bullpen rolls as we get into it. It's just so early for us, we don't know exactly. Um, Riley could close. You know, Riley, you know, Riley didn't pitch a ton this fall, so we're hoping we can get a good spring training out of him. You know, for me, as you run Riley out there, Riley's one of the few guys right now that we feel like we can run out there in a dirty inning. You know, any, first and third, one out, you know, I feel pretty comfortable giving the ball to Riley Self that he's going to make somebody hit a ball and put the ball in the zone better than a young kid. Um, he could finish at the end of the game. I think the piece of Spencer, Cole Gordon, and Riley is huge. And then we're trying to find that. The piece for us is who's the lefty in that mix. So we're really trying to figure out. We have some candidates there trying to figure out who that left-hander is that can come in and just pound the zone with strikes. They hit it, they hit it, but we're going to make quality pitches and make some people put the ball in play. Yeah, Denver said he's work, really working on transitioning from a thrower to a pitcher. Mm -hmm. what, what role do you see for Denver and how has he improved? Denver's at that back end, too. Denver's one of those older, more mature guys. I think the command piece with Denver has been much better. Um, we have saw that in the fall. I watched one of his bullpens the other day. He's been just a lot more in the, in the zone and making pitches uh, for us. But, we, you know, he's probably in that back end with those handful of guys. Obviously, a lot of focus on JT as, as the true freshman guy. But who are some of the other true freshmen you think can make a contribution this, this spring? We got, we got, man, Landon Jordan is one. The two catchers, Hayden Jones and Luke Hancock. Um, you also have, um, you know, on the mound, it's JT, but we have a freshman from Canada, Eric Sarantola, has a chance to get some really quality innings. We have a chance with, um, you know, Brandon Smith, another freshman that's in the mix. I mean, we just have a Bryce Brock. I mean, I could roll through them uh, that'll have some significant roles. And then we have a group of 
really good group of some transfers and JUCO players like Gunnar Halter, Jack Egan, Colby White, some guys that could really help us out. And, and when there's others too, but it's just giving us a chance to give us a little more depth. Two more questions for Coach. Anything else? Thank you all.